Hello! Welcome back to my channel, and that goes for me as well, because this is the first time that I'm making a video in ages. Um, a few months ago I filmed some bits for a future video, which is coming, announcing the kind of new direction for my channel, um, but I didn't turn it around in the period of time that I thought I might. So here we are, it's a new year, and I am belatedly making my best books of 2022 video. Um, so yeah, here we go. It's very strange to be back feeling, filming again. I really enjoy making videos, I've really missed it. Um, I will explain why I've taken a break in that, um, in that future video. Uh, but for now, I think, suffice it to say, I had a lot on last year. Um, I did not hit my reading goal, um, but that's no surprise because my reading goal is extremely aspirational. <laughs> it's 200 books. Um, I did manage uh, to um, read enough that I felt satisfied with the amount I read though, so that's good. So I've made this list of books really roughly. I kind of went through and was like, just picked out everything I loved. Um, I didn't really play them off against each other like I have in previous years because there wasn't a standout winner. I knew there was not going to be a standout winner for my favourite book. So I am just going to tell you about the books that I really loved reading in 2022. There were others that I really, really enjoyed but didn't quite make it onto this list. I just sort of decided to do the best. And I'm going to start with the physical books because they are literally all piled up on my lap um, and I want to get them off <laughs> and put them on the floor out of the way. I do not have enough space to have a table next to me while I do this, so they're just on my lap and it's really annoying. I'm constantly worried about dropping them on the floor, so let's do those physical books first. Um, so, uh, the first couple of entries in the books I enjoyed the most in 2022 are um, several books by a couple of authors. First up we have Georgette Heyer. I have these lovely, very old 80s, 70s, who knows, um, editions of um, Venetia and the Unknown Ajax. Um, I really enjoyed these. I've had a little bit of a kind of uh, up and down with Georgette Heyer. I always find the books really readable, but... Um, not always like the most satisfying in the end. Some of them I'm just sort of like, eh, was all right. Um, but these two were winners. So I had a look and they are actually 70s editions and 80s printings of those editions. <laughs> um, I thought you might like to have a look at this lovely pair of covers. I actually adore these editions. I think they're so much more fun as covers than the um, typical editions you see um, being printed now where it's just a, a woman with pretty hair on the cover. <laughs> um, I just love these. Um, I don't know if they actually bear any relation to the settings of the story, if the artist read the books at all, um, but yeah, I love them. I think they are brilliant. Um, just like the books. So Venetia for me is the one where I really fell in love with the romance. Um, so it is about a young woman who um, has a very isolated life with her brother um, and uh, she has no um, expectation really of finding love um, until a kind of bad guy <laughs> <laughs> moves into the estate next door and they become friends he gets on really well with her brother and feelings start to develop but he has such a bad reputation um, that he thinks that uh, they can't possibly be together and she has to prove him wrong um, the unknown Ajax I've got to be honest I do not love the romance um, because uh, <laughs> <laughs> She's his cousin. <laughs> um, oh, sorry, I mispronounced it. The Unknown Ajax, I believe, is, is the actual title. I, I don't know these words. Um, so he is the, uh, he's the heir to um, the estate in which she lives, um, her grandfather's heir. Um, but he was unexpected. Um, his father died and... Uh, a bunch of brothers died. There's basically one left, but because um, of the uh, love interests um, existence, the, the younger son of the grandfather doesn't get to inherit. Um, and they, he, the grandfather is, is 
very forthright and very bossy and expects that he will have to do a lot of training up of this new man um, because he assumes that because his um, mother was of the lower class he won't feel well educated and all this stuff and it's very funny and um, a lot of unexpected stuff happens but yes the romance is between cousins so yeah I can leave that part but it's a t very tiny aspect of the book and it's very enjoyable if you just ignore the fact that they're related <laughs> both were just fun witty easy to read really great fun then we have Eva Ibbotson I read all of these um <laughs> in one huge blob this year while I was recovering um from Covid and I was just having a absolutely miserable time. When I wrote my list originally, I had planned to particularly highlight The Star of Kazan, which is like the kind of like, I guess, middle grade book, um, and Magic Flutes, um, which is aimed at uh, readers a bit older. Um, but I, I love them all, to be honest. Um, but to save time here, I will just tell you that The Star of Kazan is about a um, orphan girl um who maybe isn't such an orphan after all and i what i really loved about it is that um she has really great relationships with her friends and her adoptive family and it's just really adorable um and then we have magic flutes which is a romance about a um a runaway princess <laughs> who wants who loves the opera and wants to work at um the Viennese opera so she's sort of in disguise working at this opera house and I just loved all the details about all the characters at the opera house it was just absolutely wonderful um they go to put on this opera at this um grand estate that this very rich guy has just bought and it's just beautiful um and lovely and yeah all of these are definitely books that i would reread i am treasuring these battered charity shop paperbacks uh forever <laughs> so that was it for the authors with multiple books in this list now we're moving on to offshore by penelope fitzgerald um i've wanted to read this for ages actually because it is a book set on a uh riverboat um and it's set on the thames um and it's kind of grubby like everybody is living in squalor or most of them are kind of living in squalor it's really short um it's kind of like i think it's more of like a character studies than like a really strong plot but i really enjoyed it and would recommend next up moving on to some non-fiction for a bit till i've used up all of my pile or oh, i've just put in one more fiction book but we'll get to that later um we have mend a refashioning manual and manifesto so I kind of have a bit of a collection now of mending books <laughs> and refashioning books. I really, really loved them. I found them really, really inspirational. And I was not expecting to get as much out of this as I did, but it really, really made me very excited about colourful and exciting ways to mend clothes. And yeah, I loved it. Another one that I will be going back to again and again to further grow my inspiration and motivation for mending. Bigger the hair, the closer to God. Next up, where I have The Book of Delights by Ross Gay. Um, I loved this. Um, so this is sort of a collection of very short personal essays about things that delighted the author. Um, it sounds quite simple, but actually as the book progresses, it gets really into the complexity of finding delight when um, you're up against a lot of adversity in the world so uh the author is black and in america and he reflects a lot on how as a black male he's perceived a certain way and the kind of solidarity he finds with other people and yeah i really really love this then we have real artists have day jobs um which i have <laughs> had on my currently reading shelf for literal years so I started this years ago read quite a few of the essays um and then kind of put it on pause because I didn't feel like reading non-fiction at the time and um then I think I started over again and I got to a certain point where there was like a book recommendation in the book and because I didn't have like goodreads at the time like I didn't have my phone with me when I was reading it I put the bookmark in it and put it down and never came back to it <laughs> until this year where I was like finally I'm going to finish this and the way that I finished this was by making it my loo book yes my book that I read in the toilet <laughs> 
So yeah, this sat on the, the bathroom shelf um, for a couple of months and every now and then I would read a bit of it and I did finish it. I really, really enjoyed it. It's kind of like, it, it's personal essays once again. They're all really, really super short. Um, and they kind of share like bits of wisdom that she's gleaned from her life and I really really enjoyed it it was a lot of fun would recommend and I will be putting it back into rotation as a, as a toilet book I'm sure at some point in the future <laughs> Then finally for the physical books, a couple more fiction books. We have Make Your Mind This Christmas by Lizzie Huxley Jones. Um, this was one of the last books that I read in 2022 and oh my god what a one to almost finish on. It's about this woman who after a party agrees to be the fake girlfriend of this guy um, and to go back to his family home for Christmas with him um, to keep up this whole charade because reasons um, <laughs> but then she is, discovers that she actually really fancies his sister um, and romance blossoms but also drama um, and what I loved about this was just the cosy Christmas vibes were A+. Plus. Um, it just really captured the kind of magic of abandoning normal life for a couple of weeks and really getting into the Christmas spirit. There's like a Christmas fair, there's a reindeer, there's um, present shopping, there's a ball. Like there's a ball. <laughs> I love that everybody's favourite young adult fantasy somehow made it into this adult romance. Um, yeah, there's a ball. I mean, I'm not sure that I would have the nerve to put a ball into a contemporary romance. But Hux did, and well done. They have done an <laughs> incredible job with this book. I love it so much, I think I'm going to reread it every single Christmas. And then finally from the physical books, we have Death of a Necromancer by Nick Bryan, who yes, is my partner, um, but as I always like to say, I checked that he could write before we started dating, so I am not biased at all because I knew in advance that he was a good writer. Yes, that is my line, I'm sticking to it, because Death of a Necromancer is brilliant. It's about a small village where a necromancer has recently moved in and set up her business at a chicken shop where she brings back the dead for a price. Um, but things start to go downhill when one of her revived um, residents and also her assistant, Ralph, decides that he doesn't feel like he did before and starts to worry about the morality of bringing people back from the dead. Meanwhile, our necromancer, Victoria, has decided that she wants to kill her own death, a part of her, um, which will mean that she becomes immortal and won't die. As you can imagine, the story involves lots of magic and mystery and trying to puzzle things out, put things all together and work out a solution that won't just entirely destroy the whole community. Um, it's also a really beautiful book. I have not managed to find an excuse to do this yet on social media, so I'm going to do it now. Look at the chickens on the inside cover. <laughs> and yeah, I, I just love it. I just love it. All of the people involved have done an incredible job. Um, yeah, very, very happy. All right, on to the non-print books, which will hopefully <laughs> speed up the process because I won't have to keep readjusting my hair every time I lean forward to pick one up from the floor because there will be no more picking up from the floor. They're all done. Right, first up was The Switch by Beth O'Leary in which a woman and her grandmother basically switch homes. The young woman goes to live in the countryside, the grandmother goes to live in her flat in London and both of them kind of try to integrate into the community in different ways and it's just so lovely and charming. I adored it. Would read again. Next up is Harrow the Ninth. Very different kind of book. Um, I really enjoy the Locked Tomb series because I spend basically the whole time going what on earth is going on? What in space is going on? Possibly more accurately. Um, I have no idea <laughs> but I love it anyway. It's necromancy, it's weird, um, it's its own weird mythology and I guess cosmology um, that is slowly developing over the series and you kind of work out what's going on in these very tiny 
bits but also it's just so bizarre and fun and it yeah yeah i really enjoyed it it was brilliant gotta read nona this year in fact i'm gonna read nona very soon because i've got it on hold from the library on ebook uh next up at uh, empress anania i really really enjoyed this this is a delightful little story about um two teenage girls who are very very different one of them's wealthy one of them's very poor who become best friends despite the odds and um yeah one of them ends up saving the other um but also you know the power of friendship is what saves them in the end and it's just adorable and sweet and i really really love them next up is a year of yes by shonda rhymes um i had not read i had not read watched Grey's Anatomy i've never watched Grey's Anatomy this book made me really want to watch Grey's Anatomy and it's like a million seasons <laughs> <laughs> like I am not in the business of getting into shows of a million seasons, but it really made me want to want to read it. Um, I listened to the audiobook, which is which is read by the author herself, and I just found it such a interesting and cheering experience. I guess in a way to find out that somebody so successful could still have so many insecurities and still be trying to work their way through them, um, and just kind of the her process of trying to work her way through. Um, kind of her lingering issues and assumptions about herself was just yeah brilliant loved it next up is if i had your face this was a amazing reflection on beauty and privilege and kind of striving i guess all of the characters in this are really striving to be more than they started out as um and yeah I mean the setting I didn't really know anything about um the parts of Korea that feature in the book and it was just yeah it was just brilliant I really really enjoyed it next up is Frontier No. 9 by Becca Tobin which is an adorable horror comic that I read at um South London Comic and Zine Fair on the kind of uh comic library bit and yeah it's just stayed with me because it was just so <laughs> cute and disturbing at the same time and i'm not really a horror person um but this is just brilliant i really really liked it next up is five tuesdays in winter by lily king i had read lily king's novel um writers and lovers which i really really adored um last year or the year before i can't remember which i was really excited for the short story collection and it it didn't disappoint it did not disappoint um i was really lucky um a few weeks ago i found a signed copy of writers and lovers in a charity shop so i'm crossing my fingers that the signed copy of um <laughs> five tuesdays in winter will cross my path mm. yeah <laughs> or at least a hardback i take a hardback that would be fine next up is when women were dragons this was just wonderful it was not what i expected at all um it's been pu it's published in the uk by a ya publisher but doesn't read like ya it reads like literary fiction that just happens to have a protagonist who is a teenager for a large part of the novel um it kind of has that adult looking back and reflecting on their life um aspect to it which i think is more literary to be honest um it's also not quite fantasy um it's because it's it's quite realistic in a way that fantasy that fantasy tends not to be like it doesn't really revel in the fantastical elements it's more about the people and community and kind of the everyday so the protagonist of the story um is kind of living an alternate history in which women turn into dragons at various points um and it's kind of hushed up it's not really talked about um and it goes into the reasons why this might be uh but it's more about um the main character's family and her relationship with her sister and her mother and her her aunt and her understanding of the world and community and oh the ending is just gorgeous i feel like i could just read the final few chapters of the book over and over again every week because i'm like yes this is what community is this is what it feels like this is how to accept yourself within the context of a larger group and yeah I, I just loved it it was brilliant ran out of time there so <laughs> this is turning into a very long video but i'm nearly done i am nearly done all right next up um very different very adorable it's jeff um so it's jeff is a marvel comic um about an adorable land shark and his adventures um it is one of the 
cutest things I have seen in my entire life. My partner started reading it and he was like, you're gonna love this, you need to read It's Jeff. Um, and now, every time there's a new It's Jeff, um, well, Marvel Unlimited, he like calls me over and we have It's Jeff time. <laughs> um, yeah, I love it. It's so cute. It's so cute. Very, very quick, but, but so cute. Um, and yeah, I'm never sure how to count it as a book because it like, literally takes like a minute to read the whole thing every time there's, there's a new one. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to say It's Jeff as a whole. <laughs> Another adorable thing which has brought me an extreme amount of joy over the last year was discovering Dogman. So my partner Nick wanted to read more middle grade graphic fiction um, and somebody recommended Dogman to him and he bought the first one and we both instantly fell in love with Dogman. He is a um, a cop with the body of a man and the head of a dog. Um, it is as silly as it sounds, um, but also really moving. Um, and my favourite um, out of all of the Dogman books is Dogman for Whom the Ball Rolls. Um, the, it's a very funny one and also has some very touching moments um, between the ostensibly evil cat and his um, clone son. <laughs> sounds very, very silly, but it's just so cute and I love it. Um, Dogman for life. Um, Dogman is go forever. If you've read Dogman you'll get the reference. If you haven't you'll be just baffled. Possibly also baffled by my love for Dogman but Dogman is brilliant. Next up Jade Legacy. So Jade Legacy is the third in the Greenbone saga. Um, I read uh, did I read the whole whole saga this year or did I read the first one last year? I don't remember but Jade Legacy literally ripped out my heart, squeezed it, let it grow back, then squeezed it some more, then shoved it back in my chest, ripped it from me again, uh, tore it into little pieces, let them flutter to the ground, and then scooped them all back up and put them back in me. And that's where I am now. Brutally wounded by a Jade Legacy and everything that happens in that. <laughs> um, it's funny because the first book I really admired it, but I don't think I was that attached to the characters. Um, the second book, I did start to develop that attachment, and I was just really, really extremely curious to see how the whole trilogy would pay out. Pay out. Trade Legacy, I was like reading it on my phone in a cafe in Harrogate during Fort Bubble Convention, um, like desperately trying to get to the end, um, hooked, um, so terrified of what might happen to my beloved characters. Oh my god. Yeah, it was it was a lot. It was a lot and it was fantastic. Um amazing, amazing series. <laughs> then we have the other Christmas book which made this list, Someday at Christmas by Lizzie Byron, um which I feel was another dimension of Christmas book that was missing from my life and from the world in general. So Someday at Christmas is set in a town um, mainly focusing around a department store. The main character is a um makeup counter um, salesperson. Um, she has other aspirations for her life as well uh, which all feature quite heavily in the story and she has a terrible ex-boyfriend who has just come back into town. I'm giving up on this hairband because it just completely fell off of my head. I did not clip it on before I started filming this video, that's where I went horribly wrong. So you'll just have to pick up, put up with my messy hair without a bow on it. There we go, that'll do. <laughs> All right, um, yeah, anyway, Someday at Christmas. Um, I loved this so much. It's set um, around a department store. The main character works on the makeup counter there um, and uh, they assume everything is going to be business as usual, but then the um, owner of the department store's grandson arrives from America and he is going to revolutionise things in a bid to turn the failing fortunes of the department store around. People have opinions. A main character has the distraction of a former love interest coming back into town. Um, what I really really loved about this was that it explored um, a lot to do with letting go of the past but also keeping hold of the um, elements of the past that you really treasure. Um, I feel like that is such a um, appropriate 
an important theme for a Christmas book. And yeah, it was just absolutely delightful. I loved the friends, I loved the family details. Oh, it was just delightful. This is why I love Christmas books. There's just so much lovely stuff to explore and so much potential, I think, for people to explore more ideas in the future. Just checking on my phone, this really is the final book and I have not missed anything. Oh, I missed one last stop. <laughs> uh, like everybody else in the world, I was really intrigued to read One Last Stop. I enjoyed it actually a lot more than Red, White and Royal Blue. Um, I just prefer when the protagonists are girls. Um, yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> that's just how it is. Um, yeah, you know, for respect to men. Um, but yeah, I just, I just prefer I just prefer women protagonists. I really enjoyed the story of love and time slipping on a underground train in New York, uh, but as with a lot of books, it was actually the details and the background characters that really made it for me. I really, really loved um, the friends that the main character meets when she first moves and the setting and all those little details just made it a really, really magical reading experience. And finally, The Girl from the Sea, which is sort of YA fantasy romance, I guess, uh, about a girl who lives by the sea and encounters a Selkie who becomes her friend and then her more than friend, um, and the tension between the life that um, the main character already has and the life that's calling to her and her struggles to be brave enough to tell people who she is and what she wants and ugh, it is gorgeous. The art was beautiful. I really, really loved it. There we go. I have eventually got to the end of this very, very long list. As I said, I did not, I did not try and cut it down at all. I just felt like I haven't made a video talking about books this entire year. I am just going to do it all in one big blob. Um, and yeah, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully you enjoyed that. Uh, let me know if you have read some of these books. I'm sure there will be people watching who have read some of these books. Uh, let me know if there are any of my um, loves that you feel inspired to check out. And please do subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, because there will be more for me soon. Um, not sure how soon, but soon. In the grand scheme of things, soon. I have filmed some of the content. I'm going to film some more of content today, I think, as well. So that's good. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you very much if you have made it through to the end. Um, you'll see me again soon. Bye.